Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're all doing well as we are continuing our devotional each day of our coronavirus quarantine. Um, so we're, we're in the, the book of John and I'm kind of finishing up the what happens after Easter um, devotional that we started yesterday. So Peter and six of his buddies went back fishing and I, I told you that it's kind of my... It's my own personal thing. I believe that Peter was so frustrated with himself for his denial of Christ and his failure that he was like, I'm going to go back to what I know how to do. And I think it's a very male thing to do. Uh, we, we want to operate in our sweet spot, the things that we're good at. And so Peter goes, I, I'm not a very good disciple, but I was a good fisherman. So I'm going to go back and be a fisherman. And Jesus comes to the Sea of Galilee and he yells, did you catch anything? Throw the net on the other side. They do. They catch all the fish. Peter jumps over and swims. They get to the beach and uh, Peter's there with Jesus. And he said, come and bring some of the fish that you've caught. And I'll pick it up in chapter 21, verse 11. It says, Simon Peter climbed aboard the boat after the boat came to the shore. And he dragged the net ashore, had a large uh, number of fish, 153. Uh, I've heard people look at that 153 and find a lot of significance in that. And I'm not going to go there this morning. It's kind of an interesting thing if you want to study that. It says, but even with so many fish, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask who he was because they knew who he was. It was the Lord. And Jesus came, he took bread and he gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. Now it was <clears throat> the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when he had finished eating, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you really love me more than these? Now let me just stop right there. All right. So this, this section right here is really about the Lord restoring Peter to his place of position and ministry and destiny. All right. So before he gets to it, he feeds him, comforts him. They, they have time, lets him warm up by the fire after swimming ashore. And then he says, Simon, do you truly love me more than these? Now, there's a lot of different commentators who have a lot of different ideas. Is he, is he talking about more than the other disciples? Um, you know, based on my understanding, what I think he, he went back fishing because that was what he was good at, really with the intent of, well, I'm probably just going to be a fisherman. Um, he might have been saying, do you love me more than these nets and boats and fish that you caught? Um, I'm not sure, if, you know, exactly, but I, I think it's interesting. I think it, it's a it's a compilation of all of it. And how does, how does Peter respond? He says, Less, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. The other interesting thing is, is that when you look at the Greek words that are used for love here, they, they interchange and some people make a real big deal out of that. Um, I don't, but it's it's interesting study if you want to do that. And he says, uh, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says to him, then feed my lambs. Again, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered the Lord and he says, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And a third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, that when you were young, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will be stretched out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death that Peter was going to glorify God. And he said to him, follow me. So um, it's an interesting thing. Jesus is restoring him back to a position of leadership and ministry. And as soon as he gets to this place of restoration, you know, why the three things? Well, feed my lambs, right? And do you love me? Take care of my sheep. And he he's telling him that he has a job to do. And he's laying out a role of evangelist and pastor for Peter. And then he tells him about his death. And this is an interesting thing. So he just restores him to ministry. And then he tells him, you're going to die. Um way to bring things down again, Jesus. Um, why did he do that? I think um, for for a lot of us, once we figure out what our life is, uh, death doesn't have any power over us anymore. Now Peter 
made this decision. Okay, I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going all in. God's got a plan for me. And if you know you're going to die anyway, it doesn't matter, right? Because you settle the issue and it's like, I'm going to move forward. I think for a lot of us, um, we have a hard time going all in spiritually because we always have our eye on everything else, right? I want to make more money. I want to be successful. I want to accomplish this with my life. Um, I have some doubts and there's some unbelief. There's different things that, that hold us back and it keeps us from going all in. I think for Peter, once Jesus said that, it answered the question, I'm all in. I'm all in. And until my time comes, I'm going to be as effective as I possibly can. And when, when you get to that place of trust, then, then you don't have to live in fear and worry. You know, we're in the middle of this coronavirus thing, and some people are just so riddled with fear. You know, what if I get it? What if I die? Well, if you're a believer, then you go to heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I don't have a death wish. I have family to take care of, and I got ministry to do. But the fact is, is that my hope is not in things of this earth. My hope is ultimately in the Lord. And when I keep that at the forefront of my mind, doesn't mean that I check out, doesn't mean that I don't take care of business, doesn't mean that I'm not diligent and hardworking and, and all of that. But what it does mean is that my ultimate response is to please the Lord and do what he's called me to do. And if you ever get to that place, it lifts the burden of stress in such a dramatic way. Lord loves you. He's got a plan for you. If we'll learn to trust him, um, life will be a whole lot better. All right? Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.